Right, OK, you're going to see lots of reviews of these clubs in the next few days. They've all come from professional golfers. There's only one place you're going to see it reviewed by an average golfer. It's right here, it's dry ball data, and it's out onto the golf course. And an honest assessment of these new irons from Titleist from the average golfer. Yet yeah, three new irons from Titleist and they don't have the prefix of AP and uh, they've changed, they very much want to move away from that. We've got T100, 200 and 300. Uh, I could have done this over three different reviews but I'm going to put it all together and really highlight the differences between these three clubs. We'll talk about each individual performance but the differences, perhaps who they're aimed at and then my overall summary on what I think of these clubs once I've got dry ball data and I've been out there on the course with them. So we'll start off with the T100. T100 is very much the player's iron in amongst these three uh, and it's very much as you'd expect it's a smaller profile thin top line uh, it's a forge club um, so, so and it's 34 degrees worth of loft in terms of a seven iron which is the barometer we'll use for the three clubs that we test um, I'm not going to talk too much about the tech that Titleist have said is in these it's it's there if you want it in terms of uh, videos that are already out there so I'm not going to repeat that um, but what I will say, let's start off with dry ball data. And um, interesting for me was that 34 degrees worth of loft, and these were the numbers that it produced. And surprisingly, uh, ball speed's very, very good, 119, and very consistent, apart from that final ball you see there. Again, as you'd expect, it, or maybe not for me, but this is a very high spinning club. Um, and carry distance is the shock at 163. Uh, launched at 20, 110 peak height, so very, very high in terms of peak height, and carry was the surprise. 163 out of a 34 degree 7 iron is a lot longer than I'd expect it to be. It defied its loft in in my hands. Um, surprisingly so, like I said, I would expect that kind of loft to achieve a sort of just over 150 carry. That's what I've done with other 7 irons of this type. So a uh, bit confused as to the uh, loft versus carry distance. So obviously something going on in there in terms of a bit of a fire off that face. And the spin number was, again, impressively high if that kind of thing floats your boat. But uh, I'm going to talk about when I get there out on the course very shortly how sometimes that high spin number can also have some negative impacts as well. Um, anyway, let's get out on the course with them. Uh, I tried them in a number of situations, and the first one uh, you will see is literally uh, short of a green in a bit of a chip and run, and nothing great to highlight here apart from the fact where you see this ball uh, rises sort of four or five feet off the floor. When you see me try this with the other two irons that we're looking at in this video, you'll see it's the only one place where you really visibly see the difference in the loft of the three clubs. But anyway, great feel. Uh, I say great feel, good feel. I don't think this is anything like a Forge Club that um, I always use Mizuno as the barometer because of their title, nothing feels like a Mizuno. Well, in this case, it doesn't. It, for me, hasn't got that softness of a real true Forge iron. It's not got that same kind of feel at all. So I'd class it as good, but not great by any, any stretch at all. Um, irons I played in here, it was a windy day down at Conway Golf Club. And I always talk about this, about this obsession with spin amongst average golfers. Yes, it can have benefits in terms of it needs to be at a level to look at stopping balls on greens. But in this case, uh, with the T100 out there on the course, I found the ball flight was a little bit too floaty for me. Um, the 34 degrees, it, it was a weak ball flight. Um, and the spin number obviously worked against it playing into the wind. And downwind, well, you ain't stopping nothing on links greens downwind no matter what the spin number says and that's the interesting fact for me i don't know what conditions people play in um but the reality is out on the golf course the spin number was almost removed and it was a negative because playing into the wind it became very very uh, difficult to get the ball progressing and you've seen a large drop off between that and the other clubs that i tested but anyway um my overall assessment 
it was, I'd say, okay without ticking. Uh, I, I never left there feeling anything fantastic about this club. It's an okay performer. But I would say, um, although they want to remove it from it, it's got AP2 written all over it from last uh, or previous year's models. That's all I would say on that one. Uh, next club in, let's go uh, to the far end of the spectrum, which is a T300. And again, um, I know they want to remove away from the AP models. This is the effectively uh, the AP one. It's again, it's a thick top line. It's uh, overall uh, a bulkier club. Um, looks wise, I mean, I don't know. I'd, I'd be really interested in your feedback on this. I'm kind of, I'm kind of unsure about the looks. Uh, maybe grown on me a little bit the three of the clubs, but again. Uh, I think it might be a bit of a Marmite look. It's quite different and unique in terms of what uh, Titleist have done again. Uh, I think trying to move away from the traditional looks. Um, I'm not sure. In this, again, I think it's an okay looking club. Uh, top line and all the different colours of chromes on the top line itself and the chamfered edges make it. They're doing everything they can to make this appeal uh, visually, uh, appear rather visually like a, a thinner top line. Um, the balls are hit. First of all, let's have a look again. Those uh, those chips into the green, uh, very very low. This way, you see the loft change, and it's twenty nine degrees. Sorry, the loft on this. So right right at the other end of the spectrum. Um, but again, decent enough feel. It's a more clicky feel than you'd from the Forge Club. Uh, it certainly feels a little bit springy. Uh, but I'm not negative towards that. I actually quite liked it. Uh, what they've done with the uh, the AP three with the T three hundred. Then again, balls into the wind uh, again. This is where, for me, yes, it's stronger lofted, but it achieves a distance that it maintains from um, that more penetrating ball flight. It's not a low launching 7-iron by any means. Um, and again, it just cut through the wind. It was lower spinning. But it certainly did a job and downwind like i said you ain't stopping the ball on these greens anyway uh it traveled quite a bit further out there on the course than it did in terms of the difference between it and the t100 in terms of dry ball data and let's throw the dry ball data up for you now so don't forget they're the averages and it's the longer of the three clubs again as you'd expect from the uh, the, the loft 174 or 175 almost carry uh, the spin drops off at 5.5, five, but again, more than respectable for me based on all the tests that I do. Ball speed, like I said, was higher at 122. There are more variables in there for people who are thinking that uh, consistency is an issue perhaps with this, then yeah, I would say we've got a ball speed of 118 and a ball speed of 128, would you believe in there? So there are some differences. Peak height at 103, so again, it still launches the ball. Although it's um, slightly lower in launch angle at 17.8, it gets to a, um, an incredibly high peak height. And like I said, what I noticed out there on the course, transferring that, where it really matters, I think, is that certainly in the conditions that I played in at Conway yesterday, it was absolutely superb in terms of performance, both into and downwind. Uh, and I never had... Uh, I thought it was a good, good performer, and for average golfers, I think this is a really, really good product, as I did the AP1. Right, now we will move on, T200, the one that sits in the middle, and it does exactly that. It just is, it's a smaller version of the T300 and a bigger version of the T100. Um, I like the look of this club. Uh, again, it's kind of grown on me when I say I like the look of it. It is quite different and unique from Titleist. Um, the performance that you get from it, it gets, so the loft first of all, let's go the other way around. Loft is 30 degrees and I'll throw up the dry ball data for you now. So again, pretty much exactly where you'd expect it to be. 170 carry, uh, which is bang on the button for this kind of loft. 6,000 spin, which is really, really good for me. 121 ball speeds, a lot more consistent across on the ball speeds there than we've seen from the T300. Uh, launching again, very, very similar launch angle to that of the, um, the T100. Peak height was identical in terms of average at 110. Out there on the course, again, the short game chipping in, it kind of, it has got a, a, a sort of clicky feel, but uh, again, nothing that is offensive to me. It gives feedback into the hands and you can react to that feedback as well. Uh, it's nice and easy to pick the ball up. I thought, again, a more penetrating ball flight than that of the T100 for, in my hands and again, preferred it. <clears throat> um, it did, again, pretty much what I'd be looking for from that type of iron, a sort of iron that sits in the middle of the two. It was an overall good performer. But I'm gonna to get to a summary because I feel already that I'm waffling on with this review because 
there's an underlying tone to it, and that is that these clubs are okay. They're, they're, no, they're not okay. These clubs are very, very good. But the problem that I have is, is that the AP1, AP2, and AP3, uh, the 718 range, were also very, very good. And as much as Titleist want to say these are not the same, they're a different setup and the technology is different, I find it hard to separate the three profiles from the three previous profiles. I find the characteristics of each club in terms of performance difficult to separate. I would guess that if I looked at my numbers now for each of those three products that I've just mentioned from the 718 range, apart from spin, which is probably an improved number, I don't think there would be any difference. And I've not done it. Someone take the time to go and have a look. But I don't think there'll be any great differences. Um, and one thing, when I say I don't think there will, I took out, uh, I played AP, um, I'm trying to think which was the, um, it was the AP, uh, AP3s, which was the one that sat in the middle, because he mixed the numbers around a little bit. I played AP3 on the same day as I collected the dry ball data, and it was virtually identical to that of the T200. So that's the bit that I just, if you're looking for a set of clubs that fit any of these remits, these are very, very good clubs. If you've got 718 APs, then you've no need to worry about changing whatsoever. And it's just one of them ranges of clubs which there might be some people getting excited out there about these. I'm not in that category, I'm afraid. Uh, I just think very, very good. This is not a, this is where you've got to be careful with these reviews. I'm not knocking these clubs. They are really, really good. It's not because I'm afraid to knock them. Believe me, I will tell you if I don't think they're any good. They are very good. But I can't get away from the fact that in the back of my mind, they don't differ that greatly from the AP718 range in every category. And I'm afraid that's my honest assessment of it, uh, like it or not. Uh, I can't really say no more than that. I've not mentioned price because uh, I'm not 100% where these are going to sit, to be quite honest with you. Um, my review is a day later than others because I got a uh, bit confused over the embargo date. So apologies for that. Hope you enjoyed it. Like I said, for me, dry ball data is a fantastic barometer to measure clubs' performance from, and it's a good starting point, but getting that out on the course is reality, and it was a real eye-opener. If I'd have just done the review based on dry ball data, it might have been slightly different, but when I got out there on the course and you see the differences in what happens in, uh, like I keep using the same word, in reality, in when, when the wind's blowing, when, when conditions are different, when lies are different, that's when you see the true performance of a golf club. And to take the three different heads out to see the difference in the performance was really, really good. And for me, if I was choosing a club to game, I'd go to the opposite end of the spectrum and game the T300. I, why wouldn't I? Uh, I keep saying this. It's uh, packed with a bit of power, plenty of help, spinning plenty high enough for me. And uh, yeah, that compared to that of the T100, they, uh, I, I'd be far more swayed towards that easier option. Anyway, I waffled on more than I thought I would. Thank you for watching. Uh, comments down below, interest in your feedback. How do these look? What do you think of the performance? What do you think of the review? I'm going. See you later.